Welcome to Bart Sharp Limited Airbrushing. A few people have asked for a quick video uh, to detail the basic setup of airbrushes and to describe what's going on. Um, this is the basic airbrush that we sell, it's the Vader 130. It's a dual action airbrush and what that actually means is that you've got a push down action which will release the air and only the air and then when you pull back that's where you get your paint release so that is the dual action push down pull back on this particular model um, just to give an overview what, what we've got here is, is a gravity feed because the paint is in the top cup and it simply is pushed down or pulled through by gravity I'll go through the, the basic setup your airline goes on to the bottom here this is described generally as a 1 8 fitting with respect to the Vader airbrushes. You can also get one quarter and there are connectors and adapters which will help reduce and um, get your correct connection. The air comes in and it will travel along the airbrush along here and to this point at the end there. It's only when um, you start to pull back on the trigger that you'll get the release of the paint and the way that that happens is that the paint is held in this section and then the needle, which is traveling or goes the length of the airbrush, I'll show you in a second, is then pulled back from a nozzle. So I'm just gonna show you that, but uh, just to get the needle tip, which is really fine and quite delicate out of the way, I'm gonna press that one, well, I'm just gonna pull that back. And then we'll undo this very end section here. There we go. Basically what we've got there is the nozzle. Um, that nozzle really has a very fine hole in it and if I just release the needle you can see it coming back through again. So it's the pulling back of that needle which opens the aperture in the nozzle which allows the paint out. What, it, what actually happens then is that um, the air, having travelled along here and up through here, is mixed in this section. That's where the atomization happens and the paint in the air is mixed together. And then we have two further sections here. This section, that's referred to as the, the nozzle cap. And then the end section, that's referred to as the needle cap. The needle cap really just does what it says. It just it just protects the uh, the end of the the needle from uh, any damage or knocks whilst in use. The nozzle cap, you see it's just got a hole through the centre there. And the paint gets atomised within this section and sent out through that uh, aperture there. Just pull that needle back and out of the way. So a lot of the airbrushes come with various size needles, uh, nozzles, nozzle caps and generally speaking they're 0 0.2, 0 0.3 0 0.5 millimetre. The needle cap um, is a one size fits all really so uh, don't worry too much about that. Let's go to the, uh, the back section and this is where the tail end of the needle is housed. And we just really see that it, it's quite simple in setup. Pull back and you have the needle chucking guide just pulls back and that's what creates the aperture for the paint to come through the nozzle. To remove the needle you just undo the, uh, the locking nut and then slowly slide You see that that needle's got a really, really fine tip and it's important to keep that uh, protected at all times and to be very delicate with it. If um, during cleaning you've got a breakdown of the airbrush, just wipe from back to the front there so you protect that very fine point because it's at that point that the paint in the air mix comes off, um, any damage to that and it will affect the spray pattern. So we'll just put that back in. It's 
just a case of sliding it home quite gently and you'll feel a bit of resistance and that's because there's a, a packing nut, uh, a Teflon washer that um, stops the paint travelling back this way uh, along the airbrush um, to prevent spillages and so forth. Um, as I mentioned earlier, some models actually have um, an adjusting screw. I keep screwing, but obviously the further that comes out, the further that will allow the needle to travel backwards. So it's just a, a means of adding a stopping facility so that you can actually dictate the amount of paint that is sent out. Just squeeze that back on. A um, common mistake that a lot of people make when they use these airbrushes is that they think they have to put 20 newtons of pressure on every uh, every twist. You don't. It's generally just finger tight. There's nothing to do with air pressure down this end. Um, that most fittings on airbrushes now have got a little o-ring on them and uh, once that's done up snug that'll, prefer, uh, that'll offer the airtight finish or seal people are over tightening it will just damage or split that o-ring so it's generally just finger tight and, and similarly with the, the nozzle as well I'll just show you where that is there we go just there small nozzle Now most airbrushes they actually come with a little tool as well, just like that. Um, what I generally do though is, let's just pull that needle back and out of the way again. In fact it's not quite tight so it's not pulling it back. That's better. Okay just for speed. I generally just do it with my fingers anyway, just get a tight grip on it and it, it, you can see that that's just slowly undoing. The most you want to do is, is one eighth or a quarter turn further past that with the spanner. Um, you don't need it over tight, you will break in effect what is a small delicate o-ring seal that's just there, finger tight only. Okay so that's that airbrush really explained. So that is your dual action gravity feed airbrush um, that has various size needles, nozzles and nozzle caps available. You have got um, another style which is this one here and this is referred to as a side feed siphon. Many airbrush users who uh, do model uh, aircraft and, and the like use this as a standalone airbrush for applying their top coat and their lacquer. But really, as siphon states, um, it really just sucks the paint up from this jar here and sends it up through the uh, the arm here. And it's exactly the same principle as it as it comes out uh, the needle nozzle nozzle cap there. Again, dual action. So that's a 134 on the Vader model. Um, just moving up a little bit more got the Vader 186 um, again dual action press down for air pull back for paint this has actually got a micro air control just here and that really allows for quite fine detailed artwork um, and it has the adjuster on the back as well so really that that's it um, dual action stoppers at the back and very easy to change the needles the nozzles, the nozzle caps, um, and so on. The, the key word really is just to be sort of uh, delicate with it. Uh, the the O-rings are something that uh, could get damaged, uh, but uh, spares are available. So I'm hoping that that, that actually uh, helps with the general description of what an airbrush is and how it works.